All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna finally be going over how we differentiate and integrate the natural exponential function. So if you remember the function y equals e to the x. Now, before we go into that, let's first um, review the, some of the basic properties with the natural exponential function and make sure we understand how it relates to the um, natural log function. So um, let's remember, um, in the previous lesson, how we talked about the inverse function and, you know, how if a function is always increasing and if you take the inverse of a function, then you'll get X and so forth. We're not going to prove that, you know, per se again in here, but remember the notation where it kind of looks like it's F to negative one power. Um, this is F inverse. So the inverse function by definition of the natural log, <clears throat> the natural log function, f of x equals the natural log of x. So if f of x is equal to the natural log of x, then its inverse function is going to be e to the x. So e to the x, by definition, is the inverse of the natural log of x function. So let's go ahead and just draw a sketch of what these would look like. So remember, e to the x it's just an exponential function with a base of e, where e is, you know, e is about like 2.7-ish. So if it's exponential and e is positive, you know, greater than one, then it's, you know, it's gonna be doing something like this. This will be your function y equals e to the x. Or I guess we named it g, g. Now, if f of x equals the natural log of x, and we were saying that the natural log of x is, in the, is the inverse of e to the x, then remember geometrically, it's gonna be a reflection across the line y equals x across the you know, diagonal. So if you were to draw a sketch, essentially you're gonna to wanna to reflect this in this sort of manner. And this intercept would be at zero one, and that means that this would be a one zero. This is your f, your f of x function. Well, that's, that's new. let me write it clearly. f of x, f is a natural log of x. So you should remember, like you know, that how the logarithm functions look like, you know, from pre-cal. And we kind of went over it in the first part of this um, chapter. Now. Um, Let's go over some of the properties um, with exponentials. And so let's solve some problems to, so we can make sure we can get a refresher. So we got seven equals e to the x plus one. And we want to solve for x. Remember, we can take the logarithm of both sides. And since we ease our base here, let's take the natural logarithm. So we'll take the natural log of seven and the natural log of e to the seven, or of e to the x plus one. And then from here, we can use, remember, use the, use the property of logarithms, where we can use this, this is our exponent, and this can just go as a coefficient. So this becomes the natural log of seven, equal to x plus one times the natural log of e, And remember, the natural log of e, the what, no, what number do you raise e to to get e? It's just going to be 1. So this becomes the natural log of 7 is just x plus 1 times 1. So this guy doesn't even matter. So all you're, now, all you're doing now is just solving for x. So all you have is natural log of 7 equals x plus 1. And then so you take away 1. So the natural log of 7 minus 1 is equal to x. And if you want to get an approximation, we just can use your calculator. And we'll get about 0.9459. Oops, 0.9459. All right, let's look at this next one. Um, solve the natural log of. 2x minus 3 being equal to 5. Remember, there's a base here, and it's not, you know, it's not going to be written explicitly, but the base here is e. 
when it's natural log. So e to the five equals two x minus three. That's what this equation is basically representing. E, remember e to that equals that. And then all you have to do is solve for x by using algebra. So we go e to the five plus three equals two x. Divide both sides by two and e to the five plus three all over two equals x. And again, we can just leave it to our calculator because remember e is just a number, e is about 2.71. So we can go e to the fifth plus three divided by two. And we'll get that it's about 75.7. All right, so let's review some of the common log and exponential operations. So first one that we have that we kind of reviewed here is that if we have the natural log of e to the x, then using you know that exponent or the power property that x just becomes a coefficient, so it becomes x times the natural log of e, which is basically just leaves us as x times one which is kind of showed here. So this is just equal to x. Second property we got, if we have e raised to the natural log of x, so e is being raised to a logarithm with the same base, this just becomes x. It just becomes whatever the input here. If it's like 10, if x was 10, it would just become 10. This is basically saying e being raised to the logarithm of itself equals what? Whatever the, whatever the input would be. And third property that is good to know is, just remember, this is just basic from, you know, power property, where e to the a times e to the b, you know, for exponents a and b. You can just, remember, you can just add them. Don't overthink this one, just like with regular exponents, you know, if you have x to the m plus n is equal to x to the m times x to the m, n, sorry, or like if it's like x to the a times x to the b, just add the exponents. Sometimes students overthink it just because the base is e and they think like this property doesn't hold or they just confuse themselves. And likewise, if the dividing the exponents, the same base, like e to the a over e to the b, it's just going to be your their differences, e to the a minus b. And this will hold for all real numbers, a and b. All right, now to sum up some of the key properties of the graph of the exponential function with, you know, with the base E, so the, the graph of the natural exponential function, make sure you understand these characteristics. You remember, if it's, it's going to be, you know, an exponential, so it's always positive, always increasing the domain is defined for any X value. So the domain will be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. The range, again, be all positive numbers, but not zero. It'll have an aptitude of zero. And remember, it's continuous, because again, you can plug any real number in for x, and there's a, you can evaluate it. It's always, you know, it's always going up, so it's always increasing, and that's why it's, that's why it's going to have an inverse, because it's going to be um, one to one for any x value. And it's going to be concave up, which we can show um, I'll, we can show with calculus, um, but again, if you just understand the shape, it makes sense. It's always, it's always increasing, so it's always concave up. And the limits as x goes to negative infinity would be zero. As you go to the left, it gets infinitely close to zero. So, you know, the x-axis, it never actually reaches it. And as x goes to the right, it blows up towards infinity. So, Make sure you, again, you, you understand this. You don't have to formally prove this, uh, um, but make sure, you, make sure you understand what these mean, because that's going to be key when you're um, solving some, um, some tricky exponential problems.